Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to consider the three ways that we make electricity. Now, if you think back to a previous video in this series, you'll remember that we saw there are three effects of electricity, three things that electricity does. And if you remember, those three things were the chemical effect, the magnetic effect, and the thermal effect. And we saw those being demonstrated in different ways. In this video, the good news is that we don't have anything new to remember because those three effects of electricity are actually the same ways that we make electricity. So the three ways that we generate electricity are the chemical way, the magnetic way, and the thermal way. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to demonstrate one of each of those principles to show how electricity is generated in those different ways. So we'll bring the camera in. We've got our experiments set up on the desk in front of us here. You can see we've got the chemical effect is going to be demonstrated here. The magnetic effect is going to be demonstrated here. And finally, the thermal effect will be demonstrated here. So let's bring the camera in and have a good look at these. Okay, so the first effect that we're going to demonstrate is the chemical effect. So we've got everything set up here that we need. We've got our mega multimeter here, which has been set to measure DC voltage. So that's going to measure the DC voltage produced by this experiment for us. We're going to create a chemical reaction that will hopefully produce some electricity for us. So we'll see how well this works out. We've just got a cup here made out of a non-conductive material. It's a paper cup. We're just going to add to that some water. So we'll squirt some water in there like so, fill it up so it's just about three quarters of the way full. And then we're going to add into that just some normal salt. So we've just got some sea salt here that we're going to fling in. And what we're going to do is just give that a bit of a stir. So we'll put in about yay much. Okay, so somewhere around a tablespoon, something like that. And then we'll just give that a good stir with one of these little pieces of copper that we've got here. Okay, so what we've created here is the what we call electrolyte for this experiment. So this is what is going to cause the chemical reaction to take place more strongly. We've got that fluid inside there. This is a piece of copper, just a piece of copper wire that I've kind of bent into this zigzag shape so I can get more of it into the water. So we're just going to hang that over the side there like that. And then here, we've got a piece of aluminium and this has just been uh, taken from a can that you'd buy in the supermarket, cut into strips very carefully because it leaves quite a sharp edge. And then I've just sanded the surface down uh, to remove any paint that might be on there to make sure that the chemical reaction takes place really well. So now if I drop that into here, I've got both of these just hooked on over the edge. Okay. And hopefully when I connect my multimeter up to these two pieces of metal that I've got in here, we should see that it is producing a voltage. So let's just turn the light on there so we can see that a little bit more clearly. And now we will connect up our leads. So I'm going to click the uh, positive connection on there. I'm just going to have to be a little bit careful here that these don't touch each other in the water. And then hopefully when I connect this one on, we should find, yes, there it is. So we're getting 0.9 volts. Excellent. Happy days. So we're getting 0.9 volts of electricity being produced. So just so you don't think I'm cheating in any way, if I take that off, you can see there that the voltage disappears. And when I reconnect it, you can see that the voltage returns. So what we've created, we've created a chemical reaction taking place inside this fluid between these two different pieces of metal. What we've actually done is created the foundation for a battery. Now we can't technically call this a battery because there's only one unit here. What we've created here is what's called a cell. Now a cell is just basically a little device that will produce electricity. A chemical reaction takes place inside it and it gives a voltage output. If you connect lots of those cells together, then you create a battery. So a battery is made up of cells. And in a future video, we'll explore that idea in a little bit more detail. But just to illustrate that point a little bit more deeply, you can see here what we've got. People often refer to this as a watch battery. So you can see that there. Actually, what this is more likely, this is actually a cell. So this is just a single uh, chemical reaction taking place between two pieces of dissimilar metal. And that's producing a voltage across either side. So you've got the positive side on one side, and the negative side on the other. And then if we take lots of those cells and kind of pile them up on top of each other like this, then you create what we call 
a battery that looks something more like that. But as we say, we'll explore that in a little bit more depth in a future video. So there we've demonstrated our first effective electricity that we use to make electricity. We have explored the chemical way of generating electricity as used in cells and batteries. So the second of the three ways that we generate electricity is the thermal effect. Now we're going to talk about the thermal effect before we talk about the magnetic effect because this confuses people a little bit and we can clear something up right here as we experiment. So what we've got here is we've got two pieces of metal that are not the same as each other connected to each other at this end here. So we've got a piece of copper wire and a piece of steel wire and they've been connected together up at this end. And what this uh, produces is effectively a device called a thermocouple. Now we're using couple here in the sense that when you join two things together, like if you join two pieces of conduit together, you use a coupler, you couple them. So that's what we've done here. We've coupled these two pieces of metal together and we have created a very crude, what we call thermocouple. So the other uh, part of that word is thermo, meaning heat. So what we should find now is that when we heat up this connection here, we should find that that generates a voltage for us. So again, let's just put the illuminated screen on and we're going to go straight in with the blowtorch. So we're going to start heating up this connection and keep your eye on the multimeter screen there to see what voltage we're generating. So you see there we're getting 0.003 volts, so about ooh, up to 4 millivolts there, we've got 4 millivolts. And you can actually see there that that is glowing absolutely red hot now. So we've got uh, up as high as 4 millivolts there, which is the best that's ever actually gone for me, that experiment. So we can see there that we've used a heat source to generate electricity, but you'll also notice that what we've produced there was a tiny amount of electricity, just four millivolts using the heat of a blowtorch. So as you can imagine, this is not a very efficient way of actually generating electricity. So we don't use the thermal method to generate huge amounts of electricity. But what we can use it for is we can use it to actually monitor the temperature of things. So by taking that voltage reading that we just had, and turning that into a temperature reading using a special device that kind of uh, changes the voltage reading into a temperature reading, we can actually use this principle to monitor the temperature of things like uh, boilers or ovens. Uh, they're used in everyday settings in things like thermometers that you might use for taking someone's temperature uh, all the way up to big thermocouples that are used in perhaps industrial boilers. And you can see we've got some pictures on the screen now of different kinds of thermocouples that you might come across in the electrical world. And these have been very kindly uh, sent to us by uh, Peter Hook from uh, LinkedIn. So thank you very much for sending those to us. Uh, we were able to use those in the video and we're really grateful for that. So we'll do another video in the future about thermocouples. Uh, there's lots of different types and we'll explore the way they work a little bit more detail and look at some different kinds. But here we can see the basic principle that when we heat those two pieces of metal that have been joined together up, we generate a voltage. Now, the mistake that a lot of people make at this point is they think about big power generating equipment, such as we get in power stations and things like that. And they think, well, we burn things like coal and oil and gas and we turn that into electricity. However, when we burn those substances and make electricity, we are not using the thermal effect of electricity. What we do is we use that uh, heat energy that we get from burning those things to heat water into steam. That steam then drives a turbine and that turbine is connected to a generator and the generator uses the next effect of electricity, which is the magnetic effect of electricity. And this is such an important effect. We've produced so much electricity using this method that it really deserves its own video. So we'll look at that in the next in this series. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.